Who was responsible for the video and how did all of this happen? What was the source of this video and why did Mrs. van der Leyen decide to participate and on whose advice? Thank you, Alain. Making of a video is not something which is in my field of expertise, but I can tell you that this was at the request of the Croatian Prime Minister's Cabinet on Friday morning. The President recorded a very short clip as part of the Croatian campaign, legislative campaign. Now, that was recorded in the margins of a lot of other video material which was being prepared and which the President was recording in the course of Friday morning because, as you know, during this period of confinement, often participation in external events and conferences involves a video link. In other words, it's virtual. So these recordings were done in the Commission's studios and it's during that effort that this very brief clip was recorded, which was uh, then subsequently sent to our contacts in Croatia. And now, obviously, this video should not have been recorded against a backdrop of the Berlaymont. The thing is that when it was recorded, they used the same backdrop they had used for the previous video recordings, and it was just uh, unchanged. Now, then in the post-production phase in Zagreb, the heading president was added to the backdrop, and that wasn't, of course, uh, provided for initially. Now, the president was informed of these uh, mistakes, and she would, make, she would like to make it very, very clear that any video clip that she might wish to record of a political nature must be clearly in line with the details of the Commission's Code of Conduct and the articles in that Code of Conduct. And she wishes to ensure that the uh, appropriate procedures are in place to avoid such an unintentional error creeping in again in the future. So much for the making of that particular video. As to her vision of events ex post, well, clearly the President is of the view that it's a good thing for European democracy that members of the College can engage in an active political life. So that's the kind of thing which must be permitted. At the same time, uh, the appropriate conditions must apply to any such activities. So that's all I can tell you on that. So if I've understood correctly, there wouldn't have been uh, the Berlimont as a backdrop, nor would there have been the president's name she considers, apart from that, that it's perfectly appropriate to her role and her position to adopt a political stance, and that's what it is, in, in favour of a particular grouping or party in a member state. Is that correct? No, she, she, she um, recorded a very brief video clip as part of an electoral campaign. And she feels that this is indeed something which should be permissible. James, over to you. Yes. Over to you. Hello, Eric. Let me just turn my translation off so that you can, I can hear you. Um, two very quick questions. Uh, will you apologize for the uh, election video? And who, who paid for the uh, time it took and uh, the filming? And as we're, we're talking about the Berlimont, of course, everyone knows that the Commission President lives in the Berlimont. I was wondering if you had any update. We've been long promised some information about whether she would still be being paid housing, allow uh, housing allowance while living in the European Commission headquarters. 
Uh, I seem to remember being told we would be the first to know, but I'm, I don't know if I've missed something, but I, I haven't heard anything about it uh, since uh, last year. So many thanks. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Um, on your various questions, uh, the president recorded this uh, short soundbite, um, indeed, in the, um, in the commission uh, studios. As I said, this w it simply happened to be at the end of a long sequence of other videos. Uh, it was an extremely short uh, sequence which uh, you know, was recorded in a couple of uh, seconds, and post-production was done in Zagreb, so uh, there was uh, literally no, uh, no cost uh, to take into, uh, into consideration or extremely, extremely minor, minor costs. Um, and on your question related to uh, her housing alliance, I must confess that time has passed. Uh, a major crisis has hit uh, the European Union and indeed the world. Therefore, I do not remember precisely whether we answered this question in the press room or not. But in any case, we will come back, uh, come back to you on this. But I can, um, I can confirm to you that the appropriate decisions were uh, taken to ensure that uh, her allowances are perfectly in line um, with uh, her situation um, in terms of occupying the, uh, the Berlimont also as her private uh, living quarters. David, over to you. Thanks very much, uh, Eric. Just, just to follow up on James's point, I think no one would uh, suggest that the amount of euros expended is really the issue, whether it was a euro or 50 euro cents or, or more, but whether in fact um, it's an issue of propriety of the use of commission facilities and resources for the production of political material. So I wonder if you could address specifically that point. Is it just in your view, that the backdrop should have been changed, or should this not have been uh, uh, videoed in the studios of the Berlamont? But also, uh, moving away from the question of housing allowance, we know that the president does does live, in fact, in the Berlamont, and we've had a couple of instances where you've had to say that certain things are happening in a private capacity, whether that's the use of communications consultants, or in this case, that she's appearing in a private capacity uh, for a political statement. And I wonder if it, how you would advise European citizens to draw a line between the, the personal and the official when the president, in fact, lives and works in the, in the very same space when no matter what she does, she is, in fact, the president wherever she goes. Uh, but, but maybe if you could start just on the resource question. Thank you. Uh, I believe, uh, David, that I answered a specific question related to what was the, uh, you know, what was the cost of having uh, recorded this. So that's why I went into this. Um, uh, as I said, I think that the president has made it extremely clear to her team that um, we need to ensure that procedures are put in place in order to ensure that um, uh, if ever she is to record um, a uh, video sequence which is of a political nature, um, uh, this is done uh, complying perfectly with the rules of the uh, Code of Conduct. So she was made aware of, um, of this mistake um, and uh, has uh, made sure that uh, we will be in a different position if ever uh, this opportunity or this, um, such an event were to arise um, again in the, um, in the future. As to, um, as to the difference uh, between um, her <clears throat> official and her private actions um, related to uh, her occupying the Berlemont indeed as her, as her private quarters, or rather a small room in the Berlemont as her private quarters, I think it's very clear that uh, the president works in the Berlemont and that whenever she is um, using the premises of the Berlemont in an official capacity, then obviously it is uh, in the institutional context of her responsibilities um, that these actions have to be, have to be seen. Um, and she uh, takes great care to ensure that when she is occupying this space as a private person, uh, what happens um, in these quarters is indeed only of a private, um, of a private nature. Now, let me just remind you that um, in the context of this crisis, 
um, basically the Commission President and indeed uh, her teams have been working flat out, um, uh, often seven days a week, often an extremely long number of hours, and therefore it's rather uh, the opposite, it's the, the, it's the public encroaching on the private, um, but that is, of course, a different matter. Let me move now to Susanna. Um, hello, Susanna Fresh, Express. Uh, so, a uh, quick uh, follow-up. Um, in this case, uh, uh, do you consider there was a breach of the, the code of conduct, um, namely the Article 9.3, because we see some um, uh, ULAW professors arguing that uh, this was the case, that was a, there was a breach. And uh, if you read this uh, ninth Article uh, 9 point, uh, number 9.3, you also see that it specifically says that you cannot use uh, the European Commission materials, um, whatever whatever is the, the price or whatever. Um, and I also would like to ask you, if, ask you if you have received so far any complaint against uh, the EU uh, Commission President for interfering in national par parliamentary elections in Croatia. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, if you can turn off your mic. You turn off your mic. Or we'll turn it off. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, in relation to your first question, what I can say is that the President was informed that a certain number of mistakes were made in the context of uh, the production of this, um, of this video, and therefore um, that uh, we need to ensure that the procedures which are followed um, next time, uh, if there is a next time, allow us to avoid uh, this unintentional um, mistake. As to uh, whether we have received uh, complaints, I think um, it, is, uh, uh, it is already public knowledge, at least I have seen it on Twitter, that uh, there has been one, uh, one request uh, which has been made uh, for, um, for uh, this matter to be, uh, to be investigated. I suppose we continue on the same subject, and I turn to David. Susanna, you have a follow-up. Yeah. Uh, when, you, when you mention mistake, do you mean breach? When I say mistake, I say and I mean mistake. Uh, David. Thank you, Eric. I'm from Radicale, and I'm going to continue on the same issue. Who made those mistakes? Was it the Commission? Was it the Croatian Prime Minister's private office? Second question. Is there a precedent to this? Has a, president, a Commission President been involved in an electoral campaign in other countries? I remember Mr. Santerre, for example, back then, but that was a slightly different case. We're talking about the President, not the Commissioners now. Have there been other precedents? In the video, there were only party leaders, but somewhere are, are, are heads of state. Angela Merkel, for example, wasn't there. That was the leader of the CDU which spoke in this particular, who spoke in this particular case. So what's your view on that? Merci. Uh... Thank you. I'll take your last question first. As everybody knows, the President is a member of the EPP. And in this capacity, she can express political views. But she is, of course, also President of the European Commission. As to precedents, I don't have a list of potential past cases of where there might have been an intervention of this type in the past. As to who might have committed the mistake, well, the President was informed of the fact that this video was recorded 
while maintaining the same backdrop that was used for the other videos. In other words, a representation of the Berlaymont. That was certainly a mistake. Another mistake which was made was the fact that the the name of the president was added in Zagreb as part of the post-production process. So a number of errors were made by a number of different parties during this process. Alors, je ne sais pas si... Now, I'm not sure if there are any other questions on this matter. If that's the case, you can keep your hand up. Um, just... If, if there is, well... A question, I don't know if you int intend to intervene again, but uh, I will take those who have not had the floor yet. Oliver, good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning. Uh, well, good afternoon, actually. Hi, Eric. Does everyone hear me? Um, yes, now we can hear you. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, a couple of follow-up questions. I sent them to you by email, but I'm going to make both of our lives easier uh, in asking them now so you don't have to answer in writing. First of all, um, did the Commission ever have any sort of um, information or, or, uh, or, or memo or update by the legal service about uh, the actual meaning of the Code of Conduct, what it means for her behavior, for her public appearances as a, as a Commission President of the do's and don'ts? And did she consult with the legal service before she, she did this video uh, here? And then secondly, um, did she uh, actually, um, does she intend to campaign for other EP politicians? And I'm thinking particularly about the Polish presidential elections and the second round where Rafał Czaskowski, the EPP candidate, uh, actually might have a shot at winning or does she intend not to vote there? And then, uh, does she think this video was in line with the solemn undertaking she gave before the European Court of Justice in January, where, quote, uh, she swore to refrain from any action incompatible with my duties or the performance of my tasks? And more general, uh, I mean, you said she's a politician, and uh, she has a, she's a politician. Of course, she, she's allowed to have political opinions. But do you think it's a good idea uh, she actually campaigns for politicians of her own party? Thank you. Thank you for your, uh, for your questions, um, Oliver. Um, on, um, on the point of uh, was there a detailed memo from the, uh, from the legal service related to the code of conduct, uh, the honest answer is uh, I do not know. This is something that I would have to, to check, but the, uh, the code of conduct obviously stands, um, stands in, its, um, in its own right. Um, uh, I think your second question um, was related uh, to whether she would be uh, campaigning for, um, for others um, and the clear answer to that is that um, these are things which obviously are dealt with uh, strictly on a on a case to case um, on a case to case basis. Um, I understand that you asked whether um, it is a good idea that she campaigns for political parties. What my opinion is on this, I think that it is for the president, and this relates also to, to the question that you asked just before, it is for the president to assess on a case-by-case -case basis uh, whether uh, it is um, appropriate and desirable um, or, or not. Um, and I'm afraid that uh, I will ask you to repeat your uh, fourth question because I did not have time to note them all down. Oliver, yes. which one did I miss? Sorry. Hi, hello. Do you hear me now? Uh, and sorry to all the colleagues uh, listening online, but the, the channels seem to be uh, somehow um, playing against us. No, the final question was there was also the solemn undertaking uh, at the European Court of Justice in Luxembourg, where she swore that she and all the other members of the Commission, by the way, also Vice President Schwitzer, who is also in the, in the video, um, where she swore that she would not do anything, basically, that would put doubt on her impartiality uh, as a Commission President. Thank you. Look, for the President, it is, as I said before, um, uh, very important that uh, the rules are respected. Um, it is only a series of technical um, mistakes that led to the final version of the video 
um, uh, in which he uh, was meant to be speaking in a personal uh, capacity um, not being sufficiently, uh, not being clear. Uh, let's, be, let's be clear about that. Um, and, uh, and therefore, um, she believes that uh, she has uh, obviously uh, respected um, uh, in her intentions all of, um, of her commitments. Lionel. Bonjour, vous m'entendez Hello. My question harks back to what you said in replying to Alain. You talked about the president, and sometimes we've got to remember that you've also got Mrs. Switcher, in, uh, vice president, in the video as well. In replying to Alain, you said that the commission president would like members of the Commission to participate actively while respecting the rules of the Code of Conduct and so on. It's a bit difficult to decide where the limits are there. Secondly, does this not show clearly that the Commission is a kind of a hybrid body in terms of its obligations and so on? Some are members of the EPP, others of the socialist group. So is there any reflection possible. It might be, it might fit into the coming conference on Europe, on the future of Europe, uh, as to this rather hybrid nature of the Commission. Thank you for that question. Well, yes, that's more of a general issue that you've raised now. It's a very legitimate question, of course. Uh, I think it's pretty widely acknowledged that commissioners are also political players. Now, there is a code of conduct which sets out uh, as closely as possible under the circumstances what rules apply to their behavior and which procedures apply to allow them on the one hand to fulfill their duties as members of the College of Commissioners and on the other hand which allows them to continue to be politically active. So obviously there are a matter of, it's a matter of nuances and uh, subtleties in the way these are assessed, these rules. It's up to each individual, I think, to ensure that they are in compliance with this code of conduct as best they can uh, in every individual instance. You, you talked about the Conference on the Future of Europe. You've just got to remember that for us here in the European Commission, it's very important for this debate to take full account of the questions which are raised by the citizens on the European Union's priorities, its policy domains, and if they so wish, obviously it will also touch upon institutional mechanisms. Voilà. James, I come back to you. Yes, hello. Uh, thanks again. Again, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to switch my channel so I can hear your response. A uh, very quick question, Eric, and thanks again for the follow-up. Why don't you just say sorry? Um, errors were made, but she's the president. The buck stops with her, so just apologize. I have said what I, I have to say. What I have on behalf of the of the president, um, president, um, the president, the president uh, was informed. Uh, could, could we turn off the mic? Yeah, thanks. Uh, the president was informed that a series of mistakes um, were made, and she is absolutely intent on ensuring that uh, the proper procedures are put in place uh, so that such uh, mistakes do not happen again in the future. But but why not just say I'm sorry that mistakes were made? I mean, it's just sort of a basic normal thing to do when mistakes are made, especially when mistakes are made, even if it is a small proportion, using uh, public money. I believe I have answered your question. I believe I have answered your question. It's just a question. Yeah. Sorry. No, don't cut him off. Don't cut him off. <laughs> Sorry. No, I mean, it's just, it's just a question. You know, everyone always says, oh, uh, you know, and, and the Commission's always said, we're worried about, you know, seeing out of touch. You know, we're human. We're not faceless bureaucrats. Well, come on, show some humility. I think that what I've said is that um, there um, are mistakes which were made mistakes. Um, and that the important thing is to focus on uh, making sure that such mistakes are not repeated. 
Okay, well, last thing, last thing, mistakes were made, but you're not sorry. Mistakes were made, and mistakes we will make sure that the situation sure improves in the future. Okay, I don't know if this is still on the same issue, but Mose, we come to you. Please only keep your hand raised if it is on this for the moment. On this for the moment. Uh, thank you, Eric. No, it's not the same issue. Can okay, I? Okay, then hold on. Okay, then hold please. On. Lionel, tu as de nouveau la parole. Back to you, Lionel. Thank you. This ethics committee. Okay, there's been a mistake with regard to the code of conduct. What about the ethics committee? Will I think the president of the commission has to refer an issue to the ethics committee. I mean, this one involves the president, obviously, but also Vice President Switcher. So will the issue be referred to the um, ethics committee? As I said quite clearly, once the president was informed of the errors which were committed, she issued instructions to ensure that procedures be set up to ensure that this kind of Event. This kind of mistake cannot be made in the future. Voilà. Alors, 